Hi everyone, it's She's Name Kate and welcome back to my channel. Today I am at the launch of Suzuki's GSX 8R and I'm going to be riding it on the road this morning and on the track this afternoon. So if you're interested to hear hopefully a well-rounded opinion on this bike, then keep watching and I'll play the intro. Right guys, here we are on the launch of Suzuki's GSX 8R. So we don't have a forward facing camera today because we're very limited with what we can mount. So it's gonna be kind of just a one dimensional POV today. Hopefully you guys can live with that. Let's fire her up. Suzuki's quick start. There we go. Super so to start with, as you guys can see, we have a five inch color TFT. Now that has ambient lighting. So if we go under a tunnel, it'll change. Let's go. Oh, the Spanish sun. What a treat. What a treat. So I'm quite excited to see. Oh. Hello, I'm quite excited to see how the R compares to the S. So I've ridden the S and I do actually have some videos coming soon for you guys where I went on a Yorkshire trip with Lily. And I rode the S there and really, really enjoyed my time with it. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing what this bike's all about. So yes, as I was saying, five inch TFT. We've got lots going on. It is uh, up there with one of my favorite dashes. Wearing a hoodie under the leather was a good shout this morning because even though it's set to get very warm later on, it's pretty cold this morning. So we got cold tires, but we've apparently got some gorgeous twisty roads. I didn't set the mirrors before I set off, which was a rookie error because they're quite a reach. It's giving GSXS 1000 GT vibes with the reach of the mirrors. That sun is rather strong. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this day. I already know it. <laughs> I already know it. So just while we're going through these little roads, I'll just talk about, you know, the tech that this bike has. So staying with the dash theme, the dash is lovely. We don't have smartphone connectivity on this, very much like on the S model. It's very dusty, what the heck? Oh, quick shifter, bi-directional, we love it. Oh, we got a stray dog. Well, a loose dog, a little doge. So we've got three modes with this bike. We have ABC and then with traction control, we have one, two, three and off. We have the same things visually available as we did on the AS. So we have gear indicator nice and big. We've got our fuel bars. We've got a range on there as well. We've got a lovely rev counter in really nice colors. Jesus. Since this is the R, we have a more aerodynamic front. We've got a sporty screen. There are aftermarket tinted ones that you can get, which I think some of the track bikes that we're on later expect with. Oh, the grunt. And that's what I love about this engine. It's reminding me. It's the same with the V-Strom 800, DE, RE, AS. This engine, oh, it's lovely. We've got 82 horsepower and we've got 78 newton meters of torque. And the torque is just so available from so early. So since the bike has a lot of aerodynamic features, it is apparently 
slightly faster than the AS just purely because of the smoother airflow as it hits the bike and glances off it now riding position so far they've kept the seat height the same so it's 810 mil the foot pegs are in the same position which did surprise me because I went on track on the GSX AS and I thought it would be so cool if the R had rear sets or at least you know slightly back but they're not they are in fact in the exact same place then when it comes to the bars we don't have a flat bar the bars are slightly marginally lower so they do give a more aggressive exaggerated sports bike style riding position but absolutely not anywhere near the extremes of its competitor the Yamaha R7 basically I think as a lot of manufacturers do you know it's business sense to build an accessible bike with mass appeal and if you kind of niche down like the R7 of course there's a there's a purpose and there's a place for that if you you know you love your track days and you want that aggressive sports bike feel then that's like the bike for you but this that's not what everybody wants that's what I would say a few more than the most want my English wasn't Englishing very well my bad my bad suspension is different to that of the AS so that had KYB non-adjustable this has Showa non-adjustable but they are SFF BP which is split function forks or separate function forks big piston so when it comes to the damping of this bike it is a bit firmer and a bit more track orientated if you will so the bars are separate or split again so they are kind of mounted onto the headstock as opposed to true clip-ons Okay, let's just say we've just done some naughty roads there. Naughty roads. And of course, there's only so much that I can show on camera. But for those of you people who think that this is a quote unquote slow bike, it is absolutely not a slow bike. The torque on this bike is so good it's so talky so strong with it that it gives the illusion that it has far more than 82 horses far more it's <sighs> on them roads oh i'm sorry i can't show you them guys but i've got a rowdy bunch in front of me but yeah Whew. that was a a little bit spicy oh you just you just whack the throttle on and it's just like somebody is shunting you up the backside oh look at this a nice sweeper It's a very nice bike to not have a lot of force through your wrists. You can do so much by gripping the tank. Yeah, this road surface is actually gash. It's so bumpy. Like, fair play to those boys for giving it the berries, but not me. I'm self-employed. I've got limbs to think about. <laughs> oh, don't I know it. The GSX-8 are uh, just a little pan for you guys so you guys can see what it's all about. So we've got that engine that is in the 8S. Everything is quite similar, quite familiar. We've just got this fairing at the front. 
we've got a belly pan if we come around here we've kind of got jigsaw-esque front end with these like air intakes here but this is very much off the AS we've got the screen so they have this little gap here so that wind can just go up and stop buffeting mirrors on the fairing tyres we've got Dunlops Road Smarts a standard Nissin four piston radially mounted calipers twin discs on the front 310mm suspension is by shower separate function big piston forks non adjustable and then at the rear we've just got a monoshock that is preload adjustable also uh, the wheel size we've got a 180 quite a substantial one it's not a skinny 160 rear so it feels a bit bigger than it is as a bike yeah we've got these separate bars that bolt to the headstock as opposed to being proper clip-ons and it's all housed nicely with this fairing looks neat looks pretty so we've just come back in from our road ride on Suzuki's GSX 8Rs and what a road ride it was now obviously I didn't ride this bike I was on the Triton blue one this is the silver one with the burgundy rims it's kind of giving Katana vibes in my opinion with this colour scheme but group two have just gone out for their road ride and now it's time for us to take on the track but before we do that I just want to touch on what this bike is like to ride on the road it is an absolute torque machine. This bike has 82 brake horsepower, but because of the sheer amount of torque, it feels so much faster than that. Now we've been on some incredibly twisty roads today. They've been really technical, they've been really challenging, and they've really kept us on our toes, but the bike hasn't missed a beat at all. It's got loads of electrics, so many electrics like ABS, traction control, everything to keep you in check while you're on these crazy roads in case you come across you know a spot of gravel or you come into a bend too hot so these bikes are really really capable and user friendly and forgiving but they're also incredibly fun i have had such a hoot on this bike it's been unreal now with regards to the comfort of this bike and the riding position it is obviously a little more aggressive than the 8s we have the clip-on style bars which are a little bit lower uh, not as aggressive as say on something like the Yamaha R7 but still still sporty enough but without compromising comfort we've ridden a lot today probably about 120 kilometers I want to say maybe a bit more and yeah, I'm not sore, my arms don't ache, my back doesn't ache, my neck doesn't ache. It's been just really, really pleasant to ride this bike. But yeah, it's been, it's been lovely. It's been great fun. It, it's actually been more than fun. It's just been phenomenal. I didn't want to stop riding those roads. But now it's time to tackle Monte Blanc, Monte Blanco, Monte Blanca, the track. It's time to tackle the track. So if you want to see how I get on then, just keep watching. So, I'm gonna film Grace in front because we flow so nice together and uh, we're gonna tackle the track so it should be fun. Are you ready Grace? Yeah. You're gonna show me the way like an absolute badass. <laughs> Good. Right, we've got to warm our tyres up a bit. We've got people coming up fast. There we go. I'm not sure how good audio will be, guys. But it is what it is for the moment. We are literally just warming our tyres up. Because they've been cold, we're not on warmers. We're also not heroes. There's a lot of flip flops at Monte Blanco. This is particularly nice. I 
feel like Greece is a perfect example of just chilling while you warm your tyres up. We're not on OEM tyres, we're actually on some different Dunlops. Now I need to back off from her on this stuff because I get peppered by her. If this is a blind crest, you got to hug the apex because you can't see where you're going! <laughs> But it's unfortunately very easy to scrape the pegs on these bikes and it's a little bit disconcerting. This is a, an offender of the peg scrape. Level one, it's got it's got enough with more track focused tires. Well, one get round. The power, the torque is great for an eighty two. Brake horsepower machine. Oh. Look where you want to go. Push 
you right off. One piece. That's all I needed. Grace carries on like a boss. Get it, girl. Get it. Yeah, I. Uh, I've done a few sessions today. I just want to come home in one piece. That is the best way to end a launch <laughs> in one piece, and I've successfully done it. Thank you. Oh. Success! Oh. Nobody crashed! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my last track day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're right. Thank you. <laughs> you heard the hair fest, guys. He said, You ride good. I'll take it, I'll take it, because he, he's a flyer. So the tyres on these bikes are Dunlop Sport Smart, Sport Smart, that's a mouthful, and we have Road Smart on the road going ones, so no tyre warm is required, and these have been phenomenal. Oh, that's hot. But yeah, these on track have just been ace. My only complaint is just the clearance. It doesn't give me the confidence of somebody that's crashed before. Like, I, I don't really want to try my luck, push my luck, but I just keep scraping them. So it makes me more tentative to go into corners, uh, which is not the aim of the game on track. But I, uh, I just want to get home in one piece. So yeah, that was amazing. I love going around with Grace. Right guys and girls, that concludes my day ripping around on Suzuki's GSX 8R. What a day it's been. We've dabbled in road. We've had such fun ripping around on the tightest twisties and then some of the most flowing twisties. And it was just twisty heaven. And I wanna go back there right now. I'm not satisfied leaving. We also took the bike on the track and again I've never done this track before and it is a winner for me. It's just been a great bike for this track. It's the right size bike for this kind of size of track. It's not too big, it's not too small and honestly I've just had so much fun. One of the key takeaways of this bike which is just the most impressive is that 800 power plant engine right there. The torque is phenomenal it's so torquey that it makes this bike feel like it is an 82 brake horsepower if i was just to get on this and not know anything about it i'd have it at least 100 brake horsepower just the way it pulls out of the corners when you're riding around the twisties on the track as well it's just got it it's like a freight train and i absolutely love it so yeah big fan of this bike now if i'm being hypercritical one thing that I kind of wish Suzuki had done is put rear sets on this or maybe pegs just slightly you know higher and further back it would have made my confidence a lot higher on this track just because when you're banking it over you get a little bit of <coughs> but I suppose if you were going to focus your time on track with this bike 
it's not really difficult to change, is it? So it's something that you could change. And I understand why they've done it, because I suppose mainly people that buy this are not probably going to go on track. They might dabble in it, but it's mainly going to be a road bike. So the pegs are perfect for that. But yeah, the uprated suspension with the Showa instead of the KYB with the better damping. It really shows on the road and on the track because I've ridden both the S and the R on track. And honestly, I'm normally more of a naked bike girly, not so much sports bike. Don't really like them. They cripple me. They hurt my back. They hurt my neck, my wrists. Oh, I just need to chew a few paracetamol at the end of the day when I ride them. Not this. We've ridden quite far today and no aches and pains. But I guess that's because we don't have extreme clip-ons and I feel like personally that works in this bike's favour. So yeah, I've had an excellent time. I don't want the day to end and I really hope that you guys have enjoyed listening to me ramble on about this bike in a hopefully well-rounded review with the road and the track. So if you like what you've seen, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps my channel and I'm forever grateful. And until the next time guys, take care and ride safe. Bye.